Hello, my name is Zach Winkleman. I am the instructor for EdTech 272, Production of Instructional Materials. This course is offered as part of the Teaching and Learning Department at Indiana State's University by College of Education. As we get started, the course introduction. If you are enrolled in this class, you will learn and produce several mediums of instructional design. This class is uh, structured around producing um, different mediums for design materials. This class is assist, uh, designed to assist you as a future educator in manipulating, creating, producing, analyzing uh, different ways that technology can be utilized within uh, your instruction and different innovative outlets in which you can do so. We will also ask you to be able to apply some of the knowledge and skills that you've learned in previous classes and within this class to be able to take, these, the te take this information to the next step for future practice. graduate teaching and learning program here at ISU, we ask that you not take this course and enroll in some of our prerequisite um, entry level classes first before beginning this course. Some of these prerequisite courses include uh, teaching 101, Introduction to Education, Teaching 145, Introduction to Instructional Materials, and EdTech 210, Principles of a Design Process. It's essential that you take these prerequisites before you take this class, Production of Instructional Materials, that way you understand the educational process, what materials you think um, are necessary for learners to have uh, positive outcomes, and then the design process in, in itself, understanding how the steps that are necessary to design a material or design instruction that's going to be effective for your learners. You will also build upon all three of these prerequisite courses um, once you go into, once you begin this class in EdTech 272 and that in the sense that you're going to be building upon this previous knowledge and scaffolding into a higher order thinking in terms of creating and analyzing and evaluating your previous knowledge in terms of your production of these materials different ways of using uh, innovative technology to um, design instructional materials that will impact your learners. In addition, you will develop and provide strategies in, in instructional materials. Developing and providing these materials uh, will be done through production, so you will take the time in this class to actually produce work that can be included in a portfolio into your future practice and show educators and future employers of what you're capable of doing. Finally, evaluation and assessment is also critical in terms of long-term success. If we look at Bloom's taxonomy, being able to analyze and evaluate information in your work is also critical. This class is going to be built around being able to fail yet succeed. You will evaluate your each other and yourself throughout this entire course. That way you're able to reflect upon what you're doing and what you can improve on, as well as what your classmates may improve on. Um, over the 16 week period with the final culminating project. Each module will be independent of each other, yet using the same principles from previous coursework and the same principles uh, in general for the class focusing on specific uh, different instructional materials uh, platforms. As I said, we are going to focus on your overall success. We'll be using a badge system in terms of the grades. This class will essentially be pass or fail. Either you get an A or you're going to get an F. The way that you get an A for this class is that you get your three badges for your three modules. So modules one, two, and three, which I'll discuss later. As long as you get the badge for that saying, yes, I was able to do module one design, module two design, and module three design, you are able to, you are able to then begin the module four uh, final culminating project. These badges are not essentially saying you did a good job or you didn't do a good job. It's not saying that you are a C student or an A student. It's saying I understand the process, I was able to produce it, evaluate it myself, and develop something that can be used in, in uh, future teaching practice. The purpose of this class is to explore, develop, and evaluate. You need to engage in the material and be able to learn from that in the sense that 
it's not about who made the best one or what's what one uh, your classmates like the best. It's about designing and using the principles and theories of, of instructional design to the best of your abilities. Finally, there will be a lot of collaboration with this in, within this class. Within the classroom, we will collaborate over uh, journal articles, over uh, readings, previous designs that are uh, readily available through Creative Commons, also collaborate with each other. So once you are able to collaborate with the internet and the third parties, we're also going to collaborate within our own classroom. We're going to talk to each other, get their opinions, their views, and their lenses as to how they see the instruction. Finally, you also collaborate with the College of Technology students. These undergraduate students have a, an expertise in technology. You have an expertise in education. The way that these come together through this class in EdTech 272 is through collaboration. You're able to share your experiences and your backgrounds in order to create instruction that is meaningful for uh, a multitude of learners. So this collaboration is going to be key in, in terms of future success and it gives you an opportunity to see group dynamics, teamwork, and how the team approach uh, to, to learning is going to be effective for you. The, the first stage of Bloom's Taxonomy. We are now past that. You have the prerequisite courses. And what I'm going to be asking you to do is BYOR. Just like bring your own book, bring your own readings. I want you to go out there and analyze the evidence. I want you to evaluate what's available. I want you to see previous work. I think that recreating the wheel is not always necessary. See what's available. See how you're able to manipulate what's available, what people are doing and talking about. Look up blogs, uh, look up journal articles and magazines and find something that can really be meaningful to share amongst your classmates or something that you found that could be impactful for your own life. This material you will need uh, weekly and it will cover all the gamut of the mediums that we'll be talking about in terms of what we'll be producing. This gives you some type of a, a platform or rationale of what you're going to be doing in this class. As this is an educational technology class, I must let you know that there is a technology requirement. We, you are required to have a reliable computer with high-speed internet access and access to the Blackboard site and the library portal through Indiana State. In addition, I would suggest being familiar with several other mediums, um, which we will get into throughout the class, but keeping an open mind that I, while technology is difficult to grasp and may take a little bit of time, be understanding and open-minded and Collaborate with your peers. Find out what someone is able to do and what someone is able not able to do. Find out your strengths and your weaknesses amongst your classmates and be able to collaborate and work as a group in terms of uh, creating technology during this class that is meaningful and impactful while uh, developing something that's not going to uh, cause uh, undue stress or, uh, on you as a student when you have classmates that are understanding the technology itself. So use your classmates as a resource but have the reliable computer with high speed internet access in order to access the sites and the mediums that we need in order to develop these technologies later on. As an educator, I hope that you save these and use these as, type, uh, as part of a portfolio when you go to job interviews. In addition, I encourage you to explore materials and mediums that are of interest to you rather than what's comfortable for you. What I mean by this is choosing something that maybe will challenge you as a person. If you know that you're good at website design, choose something in infographics or ads when we get into that module. Something that really is going to push you out of your comfort zone to maybe impact yourself that the way that you will grow and you can be innovative and cutting edge when you become an educator. You also try, the, your, try your designs out. Now this may seem as a point where you are nervous about what I did, if it's going to work, if people will like it, if it's going to be effective. And that's okay if it does not work. That's the point of the class. The badge system essentially allows you to create instruction that is not effective, not meaningful, and not designed well in order to reflect upon what you did, listen to your classmates, and find out why, 
and you have to be receptive to the feedback to create something that really is great. Once you're able to reflect, revamp, and revise, that's when you the true learning occurs, and that's when you are able to really use the end product for the best for their students. In addition, as I said before, you will collaborate with the College of Technology students during this process, and we're really looking forward to the relationships that you may build to create a really good end product. Design or produce instruction for each of these instruction materials. Rather, it's going to be self to, uh, self selection. This allows you to use your multiple intelligence uh, theory um, and decide what type of learning style you really fits you best, and see what you as a student are going to benefit from. During module one, the first four weeks of class, we will cover ads, website design, and infographics. In module two, we will cover podcasts, videos, and interactive gaming. Finally, during Module 3, we'll cover virtual reality, robots, and simulation. Once we cover the nine mediums for producing instructional design, you will have three short-term assignments during each of those modules. During each module, you will create and produce an instructional material itself. So by the end of the, the first 12 weeks of class, you will produce three instructional materials. During Module 4, we will do a com community service engagement. This will be a long-term assignment that I encourage you to work on throughout the semester, beginning during week one, uh, but is not due until week four, or module four. Module four will focus directly on your community and service engagement. This is going to give you time in class to discuss with your classmates, reflect upon what you've been doing over the last three modules, and create something that's going to be effective for your community and for yourself as a designer. business and you will design instructional materials, produce an instructional materials from the ads, website, or infographic to match what they've been asking. This will allow you to answer a problem or a need based off someone else's uh, wishes. During module two, you will design on a budget for a diverse company. During this, you will have a diverse clientele, whether that be a low-income Title I school, a inner city school from Chicago, or a bilingual uh, campus. You will then design on a budget using the mediums that we discussed during Module 2 and using limited resources. This is where you not asking you to go out and uh, buy interactive gaming or buy audio podcasts, but finding out how you're able to maximize the resources that are available while doing this on a budget. This is going to be impactful and to your long-term success, especially if you work in a school that does not have the means to purchase some of these innovative instructions. This will allow you to figure out a way to incorporate this into your classroom while still being effective. Finally, during Module 3, you'll design, then teach. During Module 3, you'll either design a virtual reality, a robot, or a simulation. This does not need to be something that actually is produced. It needs to be a design process. So I want you to go through the process that if you were to design a robot, what would you do? If you were to design a simulation, how would you do it? Or if you were to design a virtual reality, how would it look? Then teach a classmate about what resources you used to develop one of these. You will then meet with your classmates and talk about your design process, and then look at some mediums or process out there that you could actually use to actually implement the design. This will be a very fun, a fun module, short-term assignment, as you're able to talk to colleagues and teach them the way that you did something. During each of these, you will also have self-reflection, multiple attempts, and group analysis. I added this uh, through the plus sign on this slide, so you're able to see that after each of these, you will always reflect, always have multiple attempts, and always have group analysis. This is not a one-time shot, I didn't do well, or I did great. Everyone will reflect, everyone will submit something else because everyone has room for improvement. Not one design should be submitted one time in this class. That will not suffice the badge. You will need to interact with the material again.
that we have identified within the Terre Haute community, you will select a product of your liking and you will work and design with the company. This can either be solo or as a group. And what we're talking about here is um, maybe taking a brochure from a company, say the local Planned Pregnancy, uh, Planned Parenthood company. They have a brochure over, um, over breastfeeding, um, creating an infographic, creating an advertisement, or creating an interactive game or simulation, virtual reality of that brochure and turning it into an instructional material that is innovative and cutting edge. This way you're working directly with the client, working directly with someone that's going to evaluate you, and that's someone that you're going to do something that's going to impact the community itself. I really encourage you to find a, a, a not-for-profit that matches you and your goals, your morals, and your ethics. Find someone that really speaks to you, and this project will be a lot more impactful for you. This also will show you how you can take what's already been done and redo it. This is a time where you're able to explore the ways that you're going to walk into a classroom as an educator, take what's already been done, develop and produce something, evaluate it and assess it to see if, what's, if it's working. All of the objectives of this class are built into this one long-term assignment. analyzing and evaluating. I believe that as a, a pro, as a class that's farther along in a program with the foundational knowledge we're able to scaffold a little bit higher and go to their zone of proximal development and find for them to be able to create something. As the class is called production of instructional materials I want them to make stuff. I want them to have a design or a material at the outcome of this class. And rather than just having one and having a small approach Letting a student choose is also very important to me. Reflection and action is something that I uh, pulled from the text, uh, the design and educational technology by Hokinson and Gibbons. Reflection and action uh, allows students to continuously look back on their work, think about what they've done, and analyze it, yet not stopping there. This is where my badge system comes into this class. The badge system allows a student to do reflection in action. It allows them to not to get a grade and to not be held accountable for their first attempt. As many people would find out that in the real world, you, aren't you don't only have one attempt. You will turn something in and will have multiple attempts and you will get it back from your supervisor and find out that these conversations and these, uh, these times that are allowed for you to reflect on your work allows you to develop something that's much greater. I also am a fan of Universal Design for Learning. I feel like the ability for a student to choose what they wish also matches the multiple intelligence theory, which is pictured on the left here. Under UDL and the MI theory, both of these will focus on allowing the student to choose a medium that they wish. While I think that all students should explore virtual reality, I don't think that all, virtual reality matches what all students may want to do. The way I've set up this module is has three materials uh, per unit, and these materials I will introduce but allow a student to choose one. This allows them to have their say and match the learning style that they prefer. This will allow them to explore ways to design instruction that is musical or linguistic or inter intrapersonal. It allows them to find a way to connect and have a effective, um, effective meaning for this learning. Finally, also from the Design and Educational Technology book, I really would like to incorporate the seven P's of leadership. During each module, I think incorporating the seven P's and discussing the vision, their strategy, their collaboration, the planning, producing, their behaviors, and their emotional toughness. During each of these, we'll develop these people not only into an effective uh, designer and producer of instruction, but someone that is a leader in the field of education and educational technology. I would like to encourage and motivate my students to do each of these, that they see the vision and the strategy not only as a time to say what am I going to do, but why am I going to do it. 
that they are able to see what they are, their personality and how that comes out through their design. I also think that their personal convictions will always come out. That if they are designing for a not-for-profit company during the Module 4 community engagement and they have somebody that, that goes against their moral behaviors, will they be able to design for them? Will they be able to do their best work? Or will they match with someone that matches their moral behaviors and produce something that's uh, way ahead of their other work? I think the seven P's of leadership for the ID model produced or explained in this book is something that I really would like to focus on in each of my modules and each of my students and develop this leadership style within them to make them not only a leader in my class but a leader in the future.